In this presentation, I'm gonna be giving you an overview of the Collab Viewer template and how we can use it to generate a shareable design review that works in runtime. One of the cool things about the Collab Viewer template is the fact that it's based on Blueprint. This makes it easy to work with and extendable. Another core feature of the Collab Viewer template is the fact that it's pre-built for VR, which makes it extremely powerful. So let's go ahead and jump in and check it out. The first thing that you're gonna be presented with when you run the executable is the main menu. And step one is giving yourself a name that will be used to identify yourself during the collaboration experience. So we'll just type in my name here, and then I'll click on the arrow button. So my next choice is whether or not I want to host a session, be the server, or join a session and be the client. So for this example, I'm gonna go ahead and click join session. Now there is the ability to run it without the networking if, if you just wanna play around with it yourself. So when I click join session and then click the arrow button, I'm presented with uh, a screen that's basically looking for a server. And if I was on a local network and there was a server out there, it would most likely find it and automatically join. If you're on a slightly more complicated situation, maybe you're coming in over VPN like Matt and myself are, you're gonna to wanna to specify the IP address. So you can just click that button and then just type in your IP address and then click the join button and it'll have the ability to basically be hardwired to that IP. And that's basically it. So we'll click join and Matt and I will both be in the session in just a second. All right, so here we are inside of the Collaboration Viewer, and I'm gonna spend the next couple of minutes walking you through a few of the built-in features, give you an overview of how to work with it, as well as highlight a few things that I did to extend the functionality of it, because that's easy to do since everything's based on blueprints. So right off the bat, the main user interface element is this navigation bar in the upper right-hand corner, and that allows you to switch which navigation mode you're in. Now, Matt's logged in here. You can see him represented by that camera icon. You wanna say hi to everybody, Matt? Hey, everyone. So because Matt's in fly mode, he can actually go anywhere in the scene. He can fly through the car. He can go up, down, around. He can basically go, you know, fly anywhere he wants to. The next mode is walk mode. So I'm just gonna jump into walk mode by clicking those little footstep icons in the upper right-hand corner. And when I'm in walk mode, you know, my height's kind of fixed. I'm gonna walk around on objects that have uh, nav meshes on them, and I'm gonna collide with objects that, that are in the scene, like the car and things like that. So pretty straightforward little little navigation mode. Looks like Matt's also switched over to, to the walk mode. Now, one thing that's kind of cool is if we use our left mouse button, we can both use that to go through and start to select things. Like I could pick a tree or I could pick a wheel. You know, you basically have these little laser pointers that allow you to highlight things and draw the other participants' attention to them. So that, that's a really basic functionality that's also out of the box built into the, uh, to the template. So the next navigation mode that I wanna draw your attention to is the CAD navigation mode. So if I use my middle mouse button, I can define a point on the car that's going to then become the point of interest that I'll rotate around. So I use my right mouse button to kind of spin around that. And if I wanted to change that, all I have to do is click on another point on the car, it will transition me over there, and that now becomes my center of interest. You can also use the middle mouse button to wheel in and out on that point of interest, which is, which is pretty awesome. So the last thing that I wanna talk about is the VR mode. And VR is built into the template out of the box. It's going to work with a Vive or an Oculus right, right out of the box, which is really pretty awesome. And it's very easy to jump in and out of the VR mode by just clicking on the VR icon. And once I'm in VR mode, let me get my uh, glasses on here. Bear with me for a second. And I'll pick up my two controllers. And the first thing I wanna do is get myself sort of teleported onto the ground here you know, kind of looking at this car. And the, the teleportation has the orientation tied to the wrist. So it's very easy to say, like I can look at the nose of the car if I want to jump back over here and sort of look at the back, the back tire. Very, very fast, very easy to kind of navigate yourself around. Now there's a lot of other features that are built into the template and we're going to talk about just a few of them. They're accessible in a couple of different ways. And obviously Matt, hey, look, I'm over here in VR. Do you see me? Yep. So he's gonna pick up what my avatar is doing, what my controllers are doing, the position of my head. That's actually another thing that's kind of, kind of fun about the VR system is, is the other players really do get a pretty good sense of what's going on with you when you're in there. So this menu structure is accessible just by clicking a button on the, uh, on the Vive controller or by hitting the spacebar on desktop. So I can go ahead and just bring that up. 
And then I can use my other controller to go through and sort of point on what I actually want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and jump back out of VR and back in the desktop so it's a little bit easier to work and to, uh, to demo to you guys. So the way I'm going to get back to desktop is actually by using control one. So just uh, hotkeys, control one, two, and three switch you and four actually switch you between all the different uh, modes that you have for navigation. So that's, that's pretty awesome. So I'm just gonna kind of lift up here a little bit. I'm gonna just kind of zoom back a little bit. And what we wanna do is use that space bar to bring up the menu structure. And I'm just gonna go over a couple of these that are, that are kind of fun. So I love the measure tool. We'll just go in here. And Matt will notice um, on his screen, as I'm using that measure tool, he kind of sees what I'm doing. So it's a really nice way of sort of communicating you know, a variety of different things. The fact that we're both inside of here, interacting with this, this vehicle and, and seeing all the results in real time. A couple of the other ones that are pretty straightforward and fun to play around with are the move. You know, like I can start, you know, pulling different parts of the car apart and just start ripping this guy apart. And then of course, at any time I can go back and just say reset all just to put everything back, back to where it was. So Matt, are there any of these in here that, that um, you want to talk about? Yeah, uh, I really like the explode tool and the x-ray tool. Awesome. So why don't you um, give a quick demo of what the explode does? I'll, I'll position myself in a cool area while you do sure. it. Sure. So I'll bring up my menu with the space bar. And at the bottom here, we have two explode options. So the first one's explode engine. And then I'll just go over to execute, click on that, and that will explode the engine out. Now, if I want to bring the engine back to its normal state, just bring my menu back up, go back to explode engine, and then click on that again. Now it's back to normal. All right, so that is pretty awesome. I wanna to talk to you guys about X-Ray, which is another feature that's part of the collaboration viewer. Um, and it's pretty fun. So if we jump into X-Ray and I hit apply, it lets me go through and just start, you know, sort of X-Raying out objects. Now you'll notice that there's a few other options in here. Isolate's built in, but parent is an option that I actually added. And again, it's very easy to add your own menus into the collab viewer as well as your own features. So in parent, what I've done is I've set it up so that when I select a child, it's gonna go through and look at the top parent node and x-ray everything that's associated with that parent node. So it gives me a very fast way if I go back and select the hood here to actually isolate just the engine, suspension and wheels. So it grabbed all the interior parts, all the body parts, pretty much everything that was part of that hierarchy and x-rayed those out. So let's go ahead and do a reset all. So that's a basic overview of a few of the things that you can do with the collaboration template. Now, obviously we didn't have time to go through every single function feature, but it gives you a pretty good understanding of the types of things that you can do with it. In the next part of the presentation, I'm gonna be walking you through how we added in some of the custom functionality and modifications that we made with Blueprint. All right, so here we are inside of the Unreal Editor, and I'm gonna be walking you through how to get the collaboration template working with your own data, as well as how to hook up some of the basic functionality that comes out of the box with the collaboration template. And we'll finish off showing you how to extend and add your own features in a couple of areas. So to get the data working with your own data is pretty straightforward. You have two choices. You can either create a new project by just saying, you know, file new project, going into architecture, and creating the collab viewer, pretty straightforward. And it would load up something that looks like this. So it's a sample level that's got all the basic functionality already in there and hooked up. And you could simply migrate your project into that newly created collab viewer project. Another way of doing it would be to start with your own project up. So let's just jump back over to a different map and get back to that car map that we were kind of playing around with and just add in the content or the feature pack. So how do you do that? Well, it's actually really straightforward. All you have to do is just go ahead and come to the add new button, go to add feature or content pack, and inside of here, just click on the collab viewer and that'll go ahead and basically inject all the blueprint and the game mode and all the things that you need to make the collaboration viewer work into your already existing project. So those are your kind of two choices of merging these two these two ideas together, your, your custom project as well as the collaboration viewer project. So once you've done that, you're going to need to hook a few things up. There's, there's a couple of different things you need to do. So the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to go to your project settings. And in your project settings, you're gonna to wanna to go to maps and modes, and you're gonna to wanna to come and make sure that your default game map um, mode is set to collab viewer. 
Um, so that's going to be, you know, this game mode is going to be added in when you inject in, when you inject that in. Um, the other thing that you're going to want to make sure is that your game default map is set to main menu. So when you make the executable, setting the map to main menu, that's going to be the level that loads up the UI that says, do you want to host a session, join a session? You know, that's, that's basically what that main menu uh, map is. So you just need to make sure that that is, that is also set. It's also a good idea to set your game instance class to be the collaboration viewer game instance. So, you know, with those things set, you're basically going to get uh, a, a good bit of the stuff kind of hooked up. Now, the next thing that you need to do is you need to tell that main menu map, you know, what level to open up. Because by default, it's going to be trying to open up that sample content map, which isn't what you want. So there's one more modification that needs to be made. If you go into the collab viewer, in the collab viewer, if you go to the UMG folder, so that's going to be basically where all the all the you know the the online graphics are going to be um, made. You go into the main menu, and we're going to take this widget main menu. So this is the this is the UMG that you want to edit. So if we double click on this guy, you can see, you know that screen looks pretty familiar. That's what we use to log in and, and host and join the sessions. So all we need to do is jump over to the graph, and in this graph, I'll kind of zoom out so you can get a sense of everything that's in here. Toward the bottom. There is this commit user selections at the end of this chain here, you're going to see open levels, these two open levels. So, you know, this is for the host session, a join session or a local session. So you're going to want to change this level name to be the map or the level that you want to open. So instead of the starter content, you know, level, I'm setting this to the car level. That's the level that we currently are viewing and working in. So with that done, this is telling you know, basically that map, you know, where do I jump to? What's, what's the level that I want to load after I'm done with, you know, setting up the server and the client and, and all, and all that cool stuff that's kind of built into the, into the template. So that's already been done for my, for my project here, obviously. So we can go ahead and we can save that down. So by hooking all that stuff up, you know, now when I hit play and play it in the editor here, you're going to see that we're going to get, you know, all the UI stuff that's all being driven because we've set the game mode properly, like I just showed you. So yeah, pretty straightforward and it's, it's ready to go. So a couple other things, you know, you need to make sure that you have collisions on objects for the picking to work. You need to make sure that there's, you know, a ground so that when you start and you go into walk mode, you don't, you know, drop through the floor. So you'd have to have a collisions on a ground or set up, set up a nav mesh, you know, kind of basic stuff like that. But again, that's all, you know, pretty, pretty standard stuff that you'd want to have to have a first person character running around your scene. Um, basically anyway. So those are the, those are the high level kind of uh, set up steps that you need to do to get the content working with your own custom content. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do is get everything set up to work with some of the custom features like the transform, the measure tool. You're going to want to make sure that the objects are set to movable for the things that you want to be able to interact with. So things that you want to be able to move or have explode animations on, you need to make sure that in your outline or those, those, uh, those actors are set to movable. And with that done, then you can basically jump back over into the collaborative viewer folder and go into the blueprints folder. And in the commands folder is going to be where we can start adding in some features. Um, so things like x-ray, transform, snapshot, all that stuff, dimensions, that all works out of the box without any setup. But other things like bookmarks, you know, those are kind of user definable or the explode animation, we require a little bit of setup. So but it's really easy to do because it's, again, all based on this nice blueprinted workflow. So if we just jump into the bookmarks folder and I drag this blueprint bookmark out, it's going to uh, allow me to basically come in here and grab that guy. So if we just grab that BP bookmark and sort of move it forward and, you know, position it sort of like like there, that's pretty, pretty cool. Um, that's now set up. So I'll just grab another one. So this is going to handle, you know, positioning the cameras, hooking it into the UI, all that stuff is, is basically sort of built into this BP blueprint. So, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of taken care of for you, which is, which is pretty cool. Um, and that looks, that looks pretty good there. So with that done, the next thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and set up the explode animation. So we'll go back to commands. We'll jump into the explode folder. And again, it's just a simple process of dragging that blueprint into your, into your level. And we'll give this a name. That's a little bit more meaningful than BP explode. We'll call it, uh, we'll just call it explode wheel. 
So we'll just put an underscore and then wheel inside of here. So with that done, the next thing we want to do is go down into the details panel, go into explode and go to actors root and just click the plus icon and then search for the node that, or the actor that you want to have tied into that explode. So I'm just going to grab wheel front left. So pretty straightforward. So with that done, I'm going to set my initial location and we can just search for wheel up here. So it's just easier to grab. So we'll grab that wheel and we'll just pull that guy out and then we'll jump back to our wheel explode and we'll tell it to set the explode location. So I just click on that guy. So now we can view the explode or view the initial location. It's all set up and ready to go. So we're really just kind of recording those two hero keyframes. So with that done, if we go ahead and hit play and load this guy into Pi, you can see we now have our blueprints that allow us to jump between you know, these, two, these two points. So the UI is basically being you know, driven by those, those blueprint actors that we kind of placed. Pretty straightforward. And again, all that stuff is tied into, into um, and the names would be based on the names that you have in your world outliner. You know, that drives all the menu structure. So all the menus are sort of dynamically created on the fly, which is awesome. So you can see we have our explode wheel. So if we execute that, it just does this nice little animated transition between those two, uh, those two, two key poses that we set. And again, the UI is, is all being driven based off of the name that we gave the blueprint. So that's really how easy it is to go ahead and set up um, you know, working with the collab viewer. And then all the other things like X-ray, snapshot, annotate, transform, those don't really require custom setup. So they're, they're just in there kind of working right out of the box. So that's the basics of getting your data in and working with the collaborative viewer. So let's go ahead and show you how to add something that's a little more custom. All right, so now that we've checked out how to get the collaborative viewer working with the features that it ships with, let's go ahead and extend the functionality and add in a custom menu. And what we wanna build up is that parent X-ray that we saw earlier. So to do this, it's really pretty straightforward because it's all just based on blueprints. So we'll go back into the commands folder and we'll jump into the X-ray folder and we're just gonna modify the blueprint X-ray component. So if we bring this up, the first thing you're going to notice is all the logic for the features is sort of in these blocks down here in the bottom. So the isolate, the remove, the apply of the x-ray, and then these blocks at the top are basically what's used to create the menus. Now the cool thing about the menus inside of the collaborative viewer is they're all kind of built on the fly. So when you're in desktop mode, you get a set of menus. When you jump into VR, it's kind of using the same idea but it's a slightly different version. Um, and they're kind of generated on the fly for, for every mode that you're in. So for desktop VR and for like the touch. And the thing that's great about this is it makes it very easy for you to add in your own custom menus and custom features. So let's go ahead and do that. So the first thing we wanna do is add in a new, a new spot. Instead of having apply, isolate, and reset, we wanna have apply, isolate, reset, and parent. So I'll just add a pin to this array and we'll name the button or the menu to become parent. So that's all done. So then the next thing we need to do is we need to add in and set up the options for the button. So you can see previously we had three, three options um, and now we've just added this four. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add another pin so that we can add in that fourth feature. And all we have to do is literally look at these features and then essentially copy the code. So what I'm gonna be doing for parent X-ray is almost exactly the same thing as isolate X-ray. So we're just gonna grab all this and we're going to copy it with control C and we're gonna come down here and we're gonna paste it in. So with that done, the next thing we need to do is just wire this up. So we'll grab this new, um, this new sequence that we just added and we'll wire it into there. And we're going to again, tell it to grab the third spot in, uh, in that array. So instead of being spot one, we'll just change that to be spot three. So with that done, we'll go ahead and hit compile and we can probably call this custom event something a little bit more meaningful like option four to make it a little bit more consistent. So we're kind of done with that for now. We're gonna come back here and, and play with this a little bit in a second, but for now we're, we're pretty good. So we've got the menu system set up. The next thing we need to do is create the feature. And as I said previously, this is 
almost the same thing. Parent is almost the same thing as isolate. So we're just gonna grab all this, we're gonna copy it, and we're gonna come down here and we're gonna paste it. So with that done, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're going to just hit compile. So it'll go through and build all these custom events. What we wanna do is we wanna name it something like isolate x-ray. Um, we're gonna name it parent x-ray. So instead of being custom event two, we'll just call this parent x-ray. So pretty straightforward. So with that done, the next thing we need to do is just make a small change to this code. And like I said before, the difference between parent and isolate is literally just the most basic change. Instead of just being false after this branch, it's going to be false and true. So with that done, we've now got the, the feature built. So let's, let's give this a new name instead of that, we'll call it parent. So the final thing that we need to do is we need to link this parent x-ray that we just kind of made into that menu structure. So let's just go back up to that guy, up to the options. And this is where we just added in that isolate x-ray. So instead of being isolate x-ray right here, we just need to have this become parent. So we'll just branch off of that and start typing parent, got to spell it right. And you can see there's parent x-ray. So we'll grab that and we'll grab this. So we're just gonna match what's going on here and we'll replace that to there and we can just delete this guy now. So now that we've done that, if we go ahead and compile this and save it out, let's just close this down and go back in to play this in the viewport. And if we hold down our menu structure, you can see an x-ray, we now have parent. And if we go in and execute that guy, you can see parent x-ray shows up down here. And if I touch the fender, it's gonna go through and x-ray out everything um, that that fender, you know, from the parent hierarchy down of that fender. So it does exactly what we wanted it to do. So it's that easy to go through and add in your own custom menus and your own custom features. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool. All right, so we are quickly running out of time, but I have added in three more features that are pretty cool. So I'm gonna give you a brief overview of the concepts and just give you a quick tour and run through of the Blueprint code. So inside of this, we're already in play. And if I hit the tab key, you'll see that I have a little animation happening. And this is pretty easy to set up inside of Unreal. What's interesting about this is because we're working in the collaboration viewer with server and clients, we need to make sure that everyone gets that information broadcast out to them or multicast out to them. So I'm gonna show you how that was set up in the Blueprint code. The next thing that we're gonna look at really quickly is the C key. So with the C key, it allows me to change between a 50 and a 90 on the camera. And it doesn't matter which, which navigation mode I'm in, it's still going to work using that C key. So that's, that's pretty cool. And the final thing that we're going to look at is a VR optimization mode that I had. So based on the navigation mode, I'm going to go through and change a bunch of stuff when I jump into VR. So when I click on the VR icon there, you can see that everything got a little bit brighter. So I'm tone mapping it when I go into VR because the VR headset was super hot compared to my colored monitor. So this makes it look great in the VR headset. I've turned off the trees. I've changed the bloom model. I've done a bunch of stuff to basically get this back to playing at 90 frames per second. So if we hit control one, and go back to our, you know, our, our one of our desktop-based modes, you can see we're back to the, the full high quality. Um, and how I'm doing that, let's go ahead and exit out of this guy, is actually pretty cool. I'm actually using the variant manager to switch between these modes. So I've got some things set up there to do different car configurator things, but the fun one is this little desktop and VR switch. So if I double click on VR, you can see that's my optimized mode that looks great in my headset and plays back at 90 frames per second. And then this is my higher quality desktop mode. And again, I'm just, you know, basically using this to change a bunch of different things all at once. Variant Manager is awesome for that. So with that done, let's jump in and check out the blueprint code for, um, for the camera and the door. And again, it's going to be a quick overview, but it's more about getting the, the concepts and, and being inspired by it. Hopefully this will, will plant some seeds for you guys to try some stuff on your own. So inside of the collaboration viewer folder in the blueprints, what we need to do is jump into the pawn. So in this base pawn, it basically goes out and it gets referenced into the desktop, the touch and the VR. So if we make changes to this base pawn, it's going to update into all those different navigation modes. So this is where a lot of the work is actually happening. So if we jump into the base pawn 
And you know, this was all the code that was in there. So I added in my own custom stuff kind of down here at the bottom. So in the base pawn, we've got the camera and this is, this is, this is actually pretty simple. So we've got the C key going into a flip flop and that's basically setting the field of view based on this camera that lives right here. And then that camera gets dropped into VR, you know, into, into uh, the desktop modes and, and all that. So all I had to do was literally just execute this little bit of code inside of that pawn and it just going to work. So I just, you know, dragged that guy out and then just did a set field of view off of, off of the camera. Very, very simple, very straightforward. So the door opens a little more complicated. So the first bit of code here is just how you would make the door open with a hotkey, like without trying to run it on the server. So the first thing we need to do is get that sequence or animation and store it in an array. So that's what I'm doing right here is I'm basically saying get all actors of class for that sequencer I'm, and I'm getting a copy of that and storing it in this, this, um, this basic uh, variable called sequencer, which is obviously a, a level sequencer. So then what we're doing is we're coming down here and we're going to say, when I press the tab key, I want to take that sequencer and I want to call a custom function. And the custom function that we're gonna call is something that we just added down here called door flip. So if I double click on this, it's going to take me down here. So I'm gonna say, execute on the server. So this is the important thing is we're basically gonna say, when I, when I do the tab key, run this on the server. So then this is the basic flip-flop code to either play forward or play backward. So then what we do is we basically go and say, you know, if we look at this guy, you can see that this custom, this custom event, essentially, this is just a custom event we've set to run on server. So it goes into the flip-flop, it's now running on the server, and it's going to do something. It's going to actually play either the sequence forward or the sequence backwards, and we're, we're tying that in and executing that through another custom event that we had that basically says multicast. So that's really what we're doing is we're, we're taking our sequencer, we're, we're getting a, a copy of the information. We're saying when we press the tab key, let's go ahead and execute that on the server. And then after it runs on the server, let's multicast that out to all the clients. And that's, that's the basic logic behind how you can get something to play um, in a multi-user environment. And this has to happen in the pawn. This execute on server has to actually happen in, in the pawn. So that's how the, um, that's how the door open works. Uh, again, it's, it's a quick overview, but hopefully you guys can, can kind of um, can understand the concept. All right, so I apologize for talking really quickly. I'm just trying to fit it all in in a very short period of time. So let's go ahead and check out how that VR desktop optimization mode was set up. So we're gonna jump out of this base pawn and we're gonna go over to a different section. We wanna to get to the area where the navigation mode changes happen. So we'll go into player controller. Um, this is in the blueprints folder in the collab view folder and we'll just bring up the the player controller. So in the player controller, we need to do a few things. So very similar to what we were doing with the door, the first thing we need to do is, is store the information of that level variant set in a variable. So we're gonna do a get all actors of class and you know create an array and then store that in something called VM switch. So that's just a you know like a variable that I made for that level variant set. Pretty straightforward, um, pretty easy to understand that. So there's basically three concepts here. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna come down here and we're gonna create a custom event that's going to essentially look at the navigation mode that we're in. And that navigation mode is going to be the trigger that's going to change the variant set from either desktop to VR. So this, this is basically just, we're taking that level variant set that we stored in that variable and we're using that to drive um, the switch of the variant name and that's really pretty straightforward. So this is basically now created this little custom event called VR that essentially is looking when, you know, walk, fly, orbit, and VR is, is going to trigger the switch of the level variant set. So the last thing we need to do is we need to plop this into um, the chain a little further up. So we're gonna basically say, whenever we change a pawn, run that little command. So whenever we change a pawn, we wanna go ahead down and run this little guy that basically says, oh, I just changed my pawn to walk throw that level variant set the desk. I just changed my pawn to VR, throw that level variant set to VR. And that's, that's basically it. It's, it's essentially three little things. You know, you store the information, you come down here and you, you, you build this little custom event that's gonna say when I, when I switch my modes, do stuff. And then when you look up here, it's basically 
This is when the mode is actually changing, you know, when we jump between the different pawn types. So that is basically it. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. And if you're interested in collaborative workflows inside of Unreal, make sure that you watch the multi-user editor demo in the link below. Cheers, everybody.